whenever I've gotten the opportunity to be a host of uh, this podcast, uh, not even once has a thought crossed my mind that I'm going to be interviewing my friends or any of my colleagues for that matter. But whenever this opportunity arose that uh, you are the guest of this podcast, I was very much excited to say say the least. Uh, so, Zarina, first and foremost, thank you for inviting me to be the host of this podcast. And I welcome you to the third episode of the International Cafe podcast. Thank you, Dushan. It's my great honor to be here. Uh, the pleasure goes both uh, ways. Uh, uh, I've known you for, what is it, five or six years now? I don't know. I forgot to count on it's five. <laughs> uh, so I've seen you be a nervous freshman on the on the university. I've seen you rise slowly through the ranks and become a trustee student. So <laughs> I cannot emphasize enough how glad I am to be sitting with you uh, here right now. But I'll not steal the spotlight. So I'll give the spotlight to you and present Zarina Kardovic in a manner which you want to present to our viewers and listeners. I'm really thankful for this beautiful introduction. And on the side, I will try to keep myself brief about myself. So uh, all I want to say is that um, sometimes I think that student volunteering is my second name because <laughs> from my first year uh, at this university, I started volunteering. And I'm currently uh, second year at my master's studies at the Faculty of Economy. And I'm majoring in uh, uh, marketing and management. And I think that in some way I chose this major because of all the things that I have done uh, when it's about the student volunteering and working in student organizations. I think uh, me and you both <laughs> spent a lot of our student days uh, volunteering and picking up the experience. So would you say, you said that it is the reason that you are studying what you're currently studying during the master's, yes? Yeah. What is the importance of student volunteering in general, other than, you know, maybe uh, having an easier time to decide the continuation of the studies? So I think it's training because uh, you are getting uh, to know people and you are getting to know how to do some things uh, beside the theory that you are studying in uh, your faculty and the books that you are reading. But while you are volunteering, you are becoming a new person and you have some new skills. I, looking, at the, when you, looking at you when you're working, I guess, picking up the managerial uh, skill sets is like the big, in my eyes, the biggest upgrade that a person can pick up throughout the uh, volunteering. But not to stray away too much from the conversation, I just wanted to point out the fact and we will connect uh, what we s said right now with uh, the ending of our conversation. Today we're going to be talking about ESN or Erasmus Student Network. Uh, and from my very short uh, exploration of the topic, uh, I've realized it's an international student organization. Uh, that sort of created a, this network with like local uh, local uh, groups, I'll say, in the network. So, given that I'm not really familiar with the topic, I, I want you, I want your help uh, to familiarize myself with the, what is ESN essentially in ESN Podgorica. But let's stick to the international network for first. Okay, so I will start with the formal part, and I will try to explain briefly what ESN is, or Erasmus Student Network, as you said. So it's International Student Association with the major of helping students and uh, giving them a um, feeling of being a part of a student community when they are outside of their country. So ESN, uh, in generally, is there for students when it's uh, primarily uh, about the uh, administration job when they come to uh, exchange or to other country and then to organize different activities for them to feel them to to give them feeling like they are home uh, because when you are part of ESN then uh, whenever you are in different country you know that you will find some people that are part of ESN. So uh, ESN is, as I said, an uh, international uh, association that gathers 44 countries uh, on, of Europe. 
and uh, not just from Europe, but uh, outside of uh, Europe, some countries. Uh, for now, those are two countries. But when it's about the ESN Podgorica, uh, ESN Montenegro was the last country that became a part of uh, ESN International. And in that meaning, we closed that circle of 44 countries. And now we are officially part of uh, maybe one of the biggest, biggest uh, student association in Europe. So in that meaning, I just want to say that uh, as, a part, as a member of ESN, it's my great opportunity to meet new people, to meet new culture, and to get to know more about uh, Europe and student life in Europe. So essentially, it is uh, there to provide support for the exchange students and anyone who is part of the uh, whole Erasmus program. Uh, I, uh, I guess it is helping students ease into the process of exchange, if I can, yeah. if I can get, I'm getting that from the, your uh, statement. Other than that, uh, how, what are the other ways that uh, ESN for example, the ESN Podgorica in this case, supports uh, exchange students. Let's get nitpicky mm -hmm. right here. Go into depth about what is and how it provides the support for the students. Uh, so when it's about the question for helping them, first of all, we are ha helping them with administration and all the legal documents for their stay. And then we'll, we are helping them to connect with the local community just to make them to feel like they are home. And then uh, though there are a little things that we are ha helping them, for example, which are the best clubs in our city, where is good to go to study, where you can find young people, People and so on and so on. For example, where is hospital? Those are like basic questions which we are trying to solve for them. Uh, it, it is extremely important for them to have the, that information and it, it cannot cross your mind naturally. You really have to think about these things and that's why I asked because it would never cross my mind, oh, uh, well, I probably will need to know where the hospital is when I, uh, during the exchange, but like uh, it's reliable to have someone to to be available there for all the information that they may uh, that they possibly may uh, need. Uh, but how does the whole network at, as a whole function going from that, uh, let's say, micro level of a local group like ESN Podgorica all the way to like the whole network of Erasmus mm -hmm. student uh, network? So the ESN International is structured in the way that we have three main levels. So one is the international or the top level. Then we have ESN National, which is referred to countries, for example, ESN Montenegro, ESN Serbia, ESN Italy, and so on. And then we have uh, ESN, on, ESN sections on local level, which is referred to city. So all of that is ESN. But the top level, international level, is um, referred to, uh, to resolve all the problems, uh, especially for the law, when it's about the ESN, and uh, for uh, getting new amendments about the ESN, whether those are ESN cards, which are youth cards with discounts and uh, different things, uh, whether those are uh, getting new uh, members or uh, becoming a new member, or some other approvals. When it's about the national level, uh, it's almost the same as the local level, but it gathers all local sections because one country can have more uh, local sections. So you mentioned those cards. That is also one of the benefits that uh, being a part of Erasmus Student Network uh, carries with itself. Uh, but we, you touched upon the local uh, local groups like uh, ESN Podgorica currently only yeah. ESN Podgorica exists as a part of ESN Montenegro am I right yes so how does it let's go actually from that level from the level of a local group ESN Podgorica and then we are we're going to slowly climb up to the ESN wherever the where is currently the what is the main city or the country where ESN student network was established and is it still currently there, like the main organization, the top organization? It's Brussels. It, Brussels? Yeah. Mm, well, makes sense, I guess. <laughs> so uh, how does, it, on a daily basis, how does, uh, how, how are, how is ESN Podgorica functioning as an entity? Yeah. So uh, we have a board of six people with president, vice president, treasurer, and so on, the main positions of ESN. And we are trying to coordinate all that is needed 
uh, whether those are events we are planning. So let's say we are planning all the time and we are trying to catch everything that other ESN sections, which are, which are older than uh, we are, uh, are doing. So we are planning welcome weeks, we are pl planning international nights, we are, we are planning any other cultural uh, event. But beside that, uh, the events that are planned for incoming students, we are planning the events for outcoming students. And those are traditional uh, events and those are for our example uh, info days and we are preparing our students that are using or are going to be using uh, exchange program uh, for their stay there in another country so uh, one basic day is uh, for all of us six which are member are different so we have different tasks to finish but when it's about for example during the welcome week all of us six and other uh, volunteers which is number of uh, 15 uh, currently uh, we are doing every, uh, all of us are doing the same thing we are welcoming our students we are trying to give them best treatment and best memories uh, so Hypothetically speaking, if uh, another ESN groups group opens up in Montenegro, how would that function? Like, would there be a need to create uh, additional meetings? Uh, how would that look? Or are you familiar with how it looks uh, in some uh, countries where there are multiple ESN groups present? How would that function? Because uh, we are going from like the yeah. smallest uh, to the higher up on the, I guess, hierarchy. So currently I got all the knowledge about DSN because uh, it, it was first, I was maybe me and the other six people were the first one that came to the full membership. So when it's about the uh, national uh, ESN in one country, uh, for now we are only in Podgorica because it's student center. Uh, there is the most students uh, of uh, the University of Montenegro and other universities. I want to mention that that uh, we provide not only U uh, University of Montenegro students, but the students from other university. So, for example, uh, we could uh, initiate the establishment of ESN Nikšić, as this is the second center, uh, student center of uh, University of Montenegro. So, for that, we would have ESN Montenegro and we would have ESN Podgorica and ESN Nikšić on local level. So uh, through one year we would have to organize two general assemblies where would we discuss about the main questions, whether there are uh, law questions or some other uh, questions for major events or something like this. Uh, GAs are generally a part of uh, all the international student networks, I guess. So from what I can tell, it's pretty templatey, if I am allowed to say it like that, uh, on the local and uh, national level. But uh, does it differentiate much uh, when we go further? Like, what 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 are your obligations as a part of ESN Montenegro when you're like meeting with other ESN uh, ESN organization from other countries. Is there a meeting taking place uh, in Brussels or whatever the uh, decided location for like uh, what are those GAs? Do they happen even on the national level? They can happen on national level, regional level and international level. So uh, whether we want to meet uh, to gather local sections, whether we want to meet to gather uh, regional sections, for example, our region, it would be Serbia, Montenegro, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Croatia, and so on. Whether we want to gather all of the uh, sections, all countries of Europe, then it would take place wherever we vote for. For example, uh, in uh, November, it would be in, in uh, Solon, Greece. So we, we all of the representative of all sections from all countries will go there. And the next GA will be in some other country and so on and so on. Uh, so there is some sort of like in between step uh, from like the whole network and the national level, like you said, like a region. Is there uh, currently uh, like uh, define what the region is? Because from my experiences with other student organizations, the regions are really set in stone and there is some decisions happening uh, for that specific region. Is it the case for ESN Network also? Yes, it is. It really is. And they are strictly defined. 
but uh, we do not work so much on this level. We work on international level because we think it's better to, to work in that way because there are some questions that cannot be uh, solved when it's about uh, when it's on the regional level, whether uh, there is uh, much more helpful when all of the representatives are there. But yes, for sure, there is a regional. Okay, so I like the way that you said strict because it it's an easy segue to my next question. How much of your work on a local level for ESN Podgorica is automated? How much is it already defined by some sort of processes or some just practices that already exist? And how much freedom do you have in decision making and where will you, in which manner you will uh, support the students, uh, that incoming and outgoing students that are part of this network? Is it, do you understand what I'm trying to yeah. ask? <laughs> so, um, the strict part of ESN Podgorica is that administrative way. We have to uh, do some uh, files, we have to uh, give them feedback, and those are the things that we have to uh, be templated about. So, we are using the templates when we are uh, doing the, the year, year statements and so on. But when, when it's about organizing events, we can do any event we want to do and about when it's about the organizing people about hr let's be more professional we can uh, we can delegate to whatever we want so uh, especially when it's about uh, new members uh, we use ways that we want but uh, the one thing that we have to do is to to uh, ed educate them about dsn what exactly is from the top to the local section so I guess the fun part is not strictly defined. It's more like of your decision. Exactly. Uh, that that's perfect, actually. Uh, it's hard to automate the fun part, uh, fun parts of the exchange. Uh, so far, since ESN Podgorica, when was it established? Uh, last year, May, twenty twenty three. But before that, we were uh, in the candidacy process process or uh, let's say ESN candidate section. So it was for one year from 2022 and then uh, May 2023. How does that process of uh, being accepted into the network look like? Just, you know, in a brief manner, uh, go through that process. How was it? Who initiated the process of creating and establishing the ESN Podgorica and how did it became an official member? So. I have to, to speak about the history now. Uh, the idea of ESN Podgorica existed for almost 10 years at our university, but the pr procedure was really complicated and it um, you needed a lot of time to, to invest, to just to gather the documentation and everything that you needed. So uh, it took us almost a half a year to gather all the documents and everything that was required from us. And then uh, in 2022, we filed for our uh, membership at the ESN International. Then we went for the uh, GA uh, Zagreb and we represented our body network, which was before the ESN Podgorica. And body network had the same idea as ESN, but uh, it, it, it was on the local level. It wasn't strong as ESN, so uh, the initiate was from the ES uh, from the University of Montenegro, IRO, uh, International Relation Office, and they were there for us to gather all the students that had interests in exchange and all about that topic, and six of us gathered and we started working on ESN Podgorica. And then after a lot of meetings, a lot of consultations <laughs> and a lot of requirements, European kind of requirements, which was really hard for our country, um, we became uh, candidate sections. And then we had to fulfill some kind of requirements when it's about the template for the events, for example, Welcome Week, for example, International Nights and so on. And we, have to be, we had to be a part of some GA, uh, once a year, and then uh, the other members of ESN International voted, voted for our uh, full membership, and then uh, in May 2023, we became full members of ESN. 
Uh, so I guess it's the, like I mentioned, it's pretty a familiar formula of how these international networks function. Uh, and it shares a lot of similarities with other international uh, network, uh, student networks primarily. Uh, I can tell from your uh, expression that it was hard <laughs> being uh, voted <laughs> as an official uh, member, but we will not linger uh, on that rather than what are the challenges that as a local group you're currently facing now? What kind of nature are those challenges primarily consisting of? Yeah. So um, when it's about the law of NGO, uh, when you are not NGO, it's a little bit hard for you, let's be honest. You don't have any financial source. But thankfully, uh, University of Montenegro is our main financial uh, sponsor and they are uh, giving us uh, uh, support in that way for all the events that we are organizing and all of our participations in international uh, events. So the main struggles uh, for now are, is this legal legal part? Because we have to be registered, but it requires a lot of work and a lot of uh, things to do and documents and everything. This is the first thing, but I think the, the main thing, and maybe uh, it's, it's a bigger problem, is that uh, we have a small number of incoming students here in Montenegro and in that way it's hard to organize an, anything bigger than we are organizing now and we are trying to uh, coordinate everything and sometimes to collaborate with different uh, organization here in Montenegro and the third thing that I would like to mention is uh, partnerships with for example restaurants partnerships for example with gyms because of ESN cards we cannot establish ESN cards in Montenegro because it's hard to establish the partnership with other uh, organizations or with other uh, companies so I guess the main uh work now is to establish those connections and you know integrate yourself into the culture because you know ESN is not the part of our uh, student culture uh, do you see a solution for that how you personally how would you go about integrating ESN and all the ESN benefits for uh, our students incoming and outgoing students can you do you have any idea how what the solution would look like maybe on a marketing level mm -hmm. financial level what kind of agreements and sp uh, sp i guess sponsorship contracts need to be made mm -hmm. do you have any picture you and your team of like you said six members of the board do you have you discussed that already or is it something that's like still a long term in in case uh, in planning so beside all of this problem, they are we are not relying on them. Like working of our organization is not relying on, on them. We can still work and we can give some good results. For example, a lot of our students, local students, have um, applied for exchange and this number is getting bigger year by year. Uh, and I, in some way, I can put ESN in that, in that way that we help them just to give them the idea how it is easy to go on uh, exchange program. But uh, when it's about the problems that I already mentioned, uh, there, there are solutions, but we only need the help maybe of higher institution and more of attention when it's about that. The first step is, I think, is to become NGO. And then, because in Montenegro, you need some proof that you are really existing and that you are working. But beside that, we are still small, we are still like only uh, a year old and um, there are solutions. So, yeah. I guess it's just part of the growing pains that exist, uh, especially in a small country uh, with a weird legal system, <laughs> I'll yeah. say. Yeah. Uh, so uh, other than those challenges, is there anything else that you would like to point out maybe? Maybe something you want to touch upon? Uh, so the only thing in the beginning was the language, because we we know English language, but it's a little bit hard for us to speak all the time in English language. But after two year year, year period, even maybe grammatically, I'm not a hundred percent correct, but I'm more free to speak English language and I understand a lot more than I understand it before. And it's all, not only for me, but for all the members of ESN. 
Um, do you think that the way that our students are approaching the exchange program uh, presents a problem? Is there a stigma lingering around that could potentially present a problem uh, for ESN to integrate itself in an efficient manner? So in some way, I have heard <laughs> that ESN is, I don't want to be uh, to be so, so hard on that, but in, some people are thinking that we are some kind of sect. I don't know if it's normal for them, but I don't know why. Uh, maybe it's because it's from Europe and they don't know what we are doing there. But uh, when I first started in ESN, it was a little bit weird for me how they were close, all of these people. But now after two years, I know it's a great big family and all the people that uh, are coming to our organization in this two-year period uh, really became interested in everything that we, we are doing and are trying to, to distribute their energy to our uh, organization and to develop anything that could be developed. Uh, the exact reason why I asked uh, about the perception that student is the perception that our students have around the student uh, the student networks and uh, student organization uh, those whispers of oh it's a sect oh it's a sect uh, how many students go through the ESN program program on a yearly basis so you think about volunteers the members every user. Whether mm -hmm. it be a ah, volunteer okay. or a using it for a <sighs> student exchange. So now when you count volunteers and incoming and outgoing students, it's almost more than 100 students. So <laughs> we have contact, let's say we have contact with more than 100 yeah, students. When we're speaking of those numbers, I guess it's easier to get rid of that stigma is what I'm trying to say. Yes. The bigger it is and the, con the more proof there is of an actual work. Uh, is when our like students get rid of, slowly get rid of that stigma. So uh, I don't want to drag this on for for uh, for too long. I'd say so. Uh, the only thing that there is left to say is like, what are the future plans for ESN Podgorica? Are there other ESN local groups? Uh, uh, part of ESN Montenegro plan to be established or is it still a long way to go? Uh, what are basically future activities that uh, ESN Podgorica and Montenegro is going to partake in? So uh, when we first became a member of ESN, the first thing that came on my mind is to establish another section. But now uh, I don't think it's it's necessity because of the incoming students and outgoing students. Uh, we are a small country and almost all of us are centered in Podgorica. Even if we are not living there, it's it's close to go to Podgorica. So I think the main thing that we need to do is uh, to cooperate more with other uh, countries and to make more uh, trainings for our students from Montenegro, not only for incoming students, because th those trainings are really useful I, I can I can say that because I use some of them and I want our students to use them and to uh, to make contacts with international students on uh, the, uh, another side uh, you can use some uh, trainings from uh, countries such as uh, France or Italy or any other country and you can uh, get to know some new things and you can get you can get new skills and um, uh, what else should we do in Montenegro is really to try to establish ESN cards because they are really useful for uh, many, uh, many uh, things. Uh, Besides that, we have al already two uh, youth cards in Montenegro. I think ESN would be only be uh, more benefit uh, than it's already now. Other than that, uh, do you think that is is it a necessity for ESN Podgorica to uh, get get more uh, new members, new volunteers? When it's about the number, maybe we do not need more more people uh, in numbers, but we need new people with new ideas and will of work. In uh, meaning of that, we just con uh, conducted call for new volunteers, and we already have almost forty people <laughs> that applied, and we will do selections, but. Uh, that doesn't mean that we closed every call. We all of new members are, are welcome through the year, 
uh, their only obligation is to be interested in ESN and in working is in ESN uh, in the meaning of participating in events and maybe in participating in organizing or in, in initiating these these things and events or training or workshops, whatever. I guess the, all of the benefits and the material is available in social media channels and uh, website. So uh, other than that, uh, are there any other challenges uh, that ESN Podgorica could face regarding the uh, amount of members and volunteers that it has? Do you think that it, there is a need for ESN to grow, uh, ESN Podgorica to grow in the members and volunteers? So uh, when it's about the amount, we, we do not need to grow because uh, we have enough of volunteers uh, number 15 is enough but what we need is to change uh, our volunteers because because we need new uh, ideas and we uh, need people that will be here because a lot of our volunteers have left for uh, exchange and now uh, we just conducted um, the call for the um, new volunteers and we have almost 40 people who applied for the uh, membership and now we will select who who will uh, became a part of uh, ESN Podgorica and I just wanted to mention that uh, those students are not only from from the University of Montenegro but they are from the University of Donja Gorica and from Mediterranean and it's an open call all year round uh, n- none of the time uh, gated uh, open, co- open calls that yeah, they still call them open calls in our students' organization. Exactly. There is no deadline, uh, let's say deadline, for, for becoming a part of Yesen Podgorica. Uh, anyone who is interested for becoming a part of Yesen Podgorica can contact us through our social media uh, or our uh, email, which you can find on uh, University of Montenegro uh, website or on our Insta- Instagram page. And we only need people that are interested in working in ESN and that are interested in this topic of exchange and internationalization, let's say like that. I think that we've covered it all pretty much. I guess this was an easier back and forth, at least on a personal level. I mean, we know we've we've known each other for a while. We were part of a different student organization. Then we kind of became the part of the same student organization. So glad to have you here. So glad to uh, that we had this conversation and so glad that we will keep collaborating. And once again, thank you for being my guest. And this was the third episode of International Cafe podcast. Thank you so much for having me. It was a really pleasure and I'm happy that we finally spoke about ESN. <laughs> uh, thank, once again, thank you and be seeing you around.